going to read one verse of scripture tonight. Thank you, Jesus. And we're going to deal with this book a little more. James chapter 1, verse 1. James 1 and 1. Um, James was one of those individuals that talked plain. He didn't flower it up. <laughs> he just got right to the point and told it like it was. And, and, uh, and because he realized the importance of, um, of people uh, knowing what was what. And he realized the importance of people being honest and sincere in their hearts with God. Amen. So I'm going to try to find a couple of things to say about verse 1 tonight. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greetings. I want to read that again. Pay close attention to every word. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greetings. Now, as we go on further in the book, uh, we'll find he had a lot to say. Amen. A lot of important things to say. Um, the, the scripture has some interesting facts about one of the Lord's brothers, and that's James. Uh, there's some debate as to which James it was, but... If you look at all the facts and all it strongly points to uh, James, uh, the half brother of Jesus. Um, uh, there is the servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, he simply calls himself James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, just no, no big flowery uh, speeches about who he was. He understood it wasn't important uh, so much as to who he was, but as to what he had to say. Amen. And this lends itself to the fact, you know, you've got people that they want to be important today. Amen. You've got people that uh, they want to have the reputation of killing the most people. What a, what a foolish, foolish thing. It's, you know, mm. but they, they, want to, they want to be known as the person that killed the most people. You've got them that they want to have the reputation of various things, and they want their name to be known, and and uh, uh, their glory. The scripture says in many of them, their glory is in their shame. Amen. They glory in those things, but it is a shame to them when the full truth is known about uh, the situation. Uh, he he was world renowned, known all over the world. James was. Um, James was the pastor of the Jerusalem church. Now, the Jerusalem church was the mother church of Christianity. Amen. And so he was, he was the pastor of that church. So that, that uh, kind of, in a way, carries some clout with it, you know. Man, that man, you know, he, you know that big old church where he runs 10,000? And man, that you know, he's pastor of it. Yeah. And, uh, so uh, various positions carry with it some recognition and uh, uh, people look up to certain individuals. Uh, uh, this individual, uh, he starred in this movie, he starred in that movie and their names are on TV and so on and so forth. So people, they want the world to know their name. They, they, they want to, uh, people to know who they are and what they've done. But um, when it comes to God's work, uh, it's, it's not important. Matter of fact, it can be a hindrance for an individual to try to build himself up Amen. to be known all over. And James understood that. He, he said, James, a servant, Amen. a servant Amen. Uh, of, of God and of Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, his glory was not in his title as the pastor of the uh, Jerusalem church, which is, was a popular church. And he was, he was known all over, James was. And uh, uh, so he didn't find glory in the title that he wore, uh, the title that he had. Um, 
and but so many people do they 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 get glory out of the title that they wear or the position that they have and but this wasn't um, the uh, situation with James Amen. but he got glory in the fact that he was a servant of God and of Jesus Christ Amen. I want that to kind of sink in a little bit Amen. he gloried in the fact that he was a servant of God the Father Amen. and God the Son Amen. that God honored him so much until God called him into service for him. And every one of us, we're the same way. If we're a Christian, we should be honored to be called by God and given a position in him to work for him, to become his servant. Now, if we become his servant, then we can't be doing our will. Amen. We've got to do his will. Amen. We've got to pray and seek his face. I remember... Some time ago, uh, we were dealing with a situation, a decision we made at church, and uh, I wasn't pastoring, and uh, the, the, to me it was a vitally important decision, and the way it was going, I didn't approve of, I thought it was wrong, and I still think it's the wrong direction, but nevertheless, and I lay in bed praying and talking to God about it, and, and the Lord let me know uh, that what I felt and what I thought, even though it may be right, wasn't worth a fuss. Mm -hmm. Was not worth a division. Right. Was not worth anybody being hurt over. Mm -hmm. The devil will use those sort of things to hurt the work of God. That's right. Amen. Uh, he will use, and, and they, you know, they things went, I stood up and made a speech, as, and in a Christ-like manner, different ones was talking and giving their opinion, and and I gave mine. But and I went home and I was laid in bed that night. I don't know how long just talking, and God communicating with me. And later on, some come and talk to me. They felt the way that I did, and and I told them. And I was preaching a little later there, and I said, "Your opinion and my opinion is not worth a division. Your opinion and my opinion is not worth creating a problem over." We've got, to, we've got to keep things together Amen. for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. And so that's the way we have to feel about it. Yeah. We, we, we cannot feel uh, our importance enough that we're going to create a problem over a situation. Amen. And so uh, to be a servant means that you are yielded unto the Lord Amen. to allow God's will to be wrong. Now, there are the, the Scripture bears this out, and I won't go into all that, but the Scripture bears it out that uh, we should suffer wrong rather than to create a problem. And uh, so uh, God will take care of it. We do what we feel is right. We stand for what we think is right in the Lord. And then if it goes another direction, then we just put it in God's hands. Amen. And let God handle it. Amen. And if we'll do that, the Lord can work things out. Amen. He can work them out a whole lot better than you can or I can. Amen. 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 And so that's what we must do. So James is saying, uh, hey, I'm just I'm just a servant. And despite his position and worldwide reputation, what mattered to him, and here's what I'm getting at, what mattered to him more than anything else was his intimacy with Jesus. Amen. Yes. Amen. Think about it. It was his intimacy with Jesus Christ that mattered more to him than anything else. Yes. Position, power, recognition, whatever. That intimacy with Jesus Christ. And we can, if we take the wrong direction, we can hurt our intimacy with Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So we must take the right position. We must go the right direction in order to keep that intact with Jesus Christ. It is clearly seen in the words servant uh, is understood. James, when that word is understood, James deliberately, James deliberately chose the word servant. Now, he didn't have to use that word, but I believe it was God's will for him to use that word servant to show that he was humbled before the Lord. Amen. Uh, even though he was... Uh, uh, pastoring this big church, this popular church, and known all around, all over the world, the known world at that time. He was setting an example.
for all the people to know, hey, I'm, I'm just a servant of God. And the time will come that I'll pass on and somebody else will be here. But while I'm here, I'm a servant of Jesus and I'm going to serve him and do what he would have me to do. Yes. And so that's the position that we each one need to take. Amen? Amen. He was totally possessed. Now that's, that's I'm, I'm fixing to say something here that's, that it's, it's, it means it's far reaching. He was totally possessed by Jesus Christ. Amen. A servant has no will of his own that he is able to exercise. Hallelujah. A servant does what his master says yes. to do. Amen. He belonged to Jesus and he placed importance on that. I'm going to tell you a little story. This morning, uh, Sister Christmas and I were up and, and I, I was, uh, I think just before, I was getting ready to fix us some breakfast and I opened the blinds on the uh, window at the kitchen uh, to the right of a sink and I looked, we got two cats Sassy and Jack Amen. and uh, Sister Christmas is spoiled in cats you know, I didn't have nothing to do with that but nevertheless I looked and across the field back of the house Sassy is dark gray and white and Jack is a tabby colored gray, tabby colored black well I seen this white thing coming out across the field to my left as I was facing it and I got looking and it was sassy and he come out across and he got about midway across the field and he stopped and he sat down and he looked now they are hunters we feed them but they, they're hunters they get out there and they hunt they're tree climbers and also but anyway and then he, he got up and he went on across the field and into the to the side of the woods and in behind the chicken yard which is back of the house out there and I, I thought about uh, that cat. I said, you know, you know, somebody that don't know that cat sees that cat and they say, oh, that's just an old cat. He ain't, he ain't no good. But that cat knows who he belongs to. Amen. That's right. That's right. That cat knows if I'm in the house and, and, and he gets in and I'm sitting down, he can jump right up in my lap and lay down and go to sleep. That's right. And he does. Amen. Sometimes oh, we look at a lot of Westerns. Um, and we will be sitting there looking at a western and, I, and I'll go to sleep and I wake up and that cat's in my lap and he'd be a lot more comfortable laying on the floor where he's smooth you know but he's going to lay in my lap and his back all turned and twisted and Amen. rolled up and, but he knows he's got that opportunity he knows he's got that privilege and I thought about that old cat you know somebody didn't know the cat and they said oh that's just an old cat but that cat know who knows who owns him. Amen. And so uh, I, I, he was in the house early, later today, and he's got a pillow. He, he'd get on that, lay down inside that pillow and put his head on it like a human being laying down. And I eased up to the room, and I tried to sneak in there and look, see if he was asleep. And he had that head up looking. And uh, I just looked, he looked at me, and I looked at him, and I said, can't sneak up on you, can you? He said, meow. <laughs> Just like he knew what I was talking about. So he knows he has these privileges. When I'm saying all that to say this, we are God's children. Yes. And we got to know who we belong to. we got to know whose we are. And the privileges that we have in Him. Amen? Amen. When things are going wrong, we have the privilege to go to Him. Yes. Exactly. Amen? When we're discouraged. Yes. And the devil trying to... You, you, anybody ever been discouraged besides me? Amen. <laughs> you, you know, the devil jumps on you with both feet and you feel so depressed. You know what I found out to get him going? You go somewhere or another and get you a Bible and you sit down and you start reading. You read a little bit and then you talk to the Lord Amen. about the Scripture, about whatever. And after a while... Man, you feel so encouraged. Amen. Amen. That's true. Amen. Because you're taking advantage of the privileges that you have in Jesus. Amen. So many times, God's people fail to take advantage of the privileges that they have in Him. Amen. 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 Uh, so we but get, let me get back to the cat just for a minute. They come in and, and their dish is empty. Well. They'll come out there and go to where the bag is 
and they want food. And I go there and get the cut and dip it out and say, come on. Boy, they just run. And that one will follow me around like a puppy in the yard. Just, you know. And sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes uh, we let them stay in the house overnight. Now, we don't have a litter box. But they don't mess up. Uh, sometime before day in the morning, uh, Sassy will jump up on the bed or Jack. And if that don't wake me up, Sassy, I walk up there and I and walk up on top of him, and I look up there and he's looking down at me. I need to go outside, yeah. and so I get up and open the door, and they're gone. And so he lets me know he needs something. Right. Now I don't know if you've ever had uh, a cat illustration like this or not, but when we need something, we talk to Jesus about it. Right. Amen. Amen. Yes. We go to Him mm -hmm. now. He knows what he's doing. Mm -hmm. He's got everything under control. Yes, he does. We think sometimes, God, if you don't answer this right now, it's just going to be a lost cause. No, it ain't. If God says just wait, he knows what he's doing. Amen. Amen. The scripture said, I read one place, Jesus, the scripture said Jesus knew what he would do. Amen. Yes. And in, in all of our situations in life, whatever it is that we're facing, Jesus knows exactly what he'll do. Amen. Amen. All the time. And so what we have to do, take the petition to him, carry the need to him, and keep talking to him about it. And if somebody said, Well, once you pray, you go back and pray for the same thing again, that's showing doubt. No, it ain't. Jesus said, When you when you pray, you keep on praying. Yes. You knock and keep on knocking. You ask and you keep on asking. Amen. Amen. For he that seeketh findeth, he that knocketh it shall be opened unto him, and he that asketh shall receive. Yes. He didn't say when, but he said they shall receive. Amen. That's a positive statement by the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Jesus told the parable about the, the widow that was treated wrong, and she went to an unjust judge, and he wouldn't hear her, and so she kept going to him. Every time he turned around, he would stand that woman, the woman would say, I want you to avenge me of my adversary. And he got to the point, no doubt, but he said, I'll go out the back way of the chamber today. And when he opened the door, so that, yes, said, I want you to avenge me of my adversary. Every time he turned around, he stuck his head out the door. There she was, I want you to avenge me of my adversary. And Jesus said, because as she, she continued to weary him, he answered her prayer. He done something about the need. And the Lord of God was telling us, and Jesus was telling us, we keep going to God and keep going to God until finally God said, now is the time I'm going to do something about the new amen. So we've got to be so ready and you to do him. Hallelujah. Glory to God forevermore. The devil don't want you to keep on going. He don't want you to keep on asking. But it ain't none of his business. Praise God. He was totally possessed by Jesus. Praise God. <laughs> Jesus looked at him. Jesus looked at James in his degraded and needful condition. Jesus loved him and he bought him from the spiritual slave market. He was a slave of Satan. But Jesus redeemed him. Then he became the slave of Jesus Christ. Amen. Therefore, he was now the possession of Jesus Christ. Jesus saw you and me in our depraved and sinful and wicked condition. And he purchased us. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Oh, my God, I feel the Lord. Yes. 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 He purchased us. Now, we are the possession of Jesus Christ. Don't you ever let the devil convince you Jesus don't love you. You are his possession. He cares about what touches your life. The word of God says he is touched with the feelings of our infirmities. He was tempted in all points like as we are yet without sin. He knows how to secure the godly in the day of temptation. The word of God says. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's not what the church of God says. It's what the word of God says. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ loved him and bought him, purchased him. Now he was the possession of Jesus Christ. The slave existed 
You know what I'm saying? For his master. And existed for his master only. For his purpose. For his will. For his intent. And I would say to us tonight. We're here. Because we're here for the master's will. Amen. For the master's purpose. Amen. We're here to bring glory to Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. Amen. So we don't have a right to do what we want to do. Amen. Now, serving God is not a destruction of your will, but it is a surrender of your will to His will. Amen. 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 Great Lord of mercy. I feel like right now I can preach all night. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You see, when we yield to Him, when I retired, I didn't have no idea that we'd be, I'd be pastoring uh, again. Didn't have no idea I'd be pastoring forever the church of God. No idea whatsoever. But I knew one thing. Amen. God had put it in my heart and I had one more mountain to climb. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. 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 I got a message on Caleb when he said, I got another mountain to climb. I want to take this mountain here. Amen. And I felt like that's what God had put in my spirit. I didn't know what it was or where it was, but whenever the overseer called, Amen. I said, Lord, that's it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we got a mountain to climb. Amen. But we got the one with us that created the mountain. Amen. That's right. And he knows the way for us to take. Amen. He knows the thing for us to do. Amen. Amen. Right. And he knows where it is and he can bring it to us. Amen. He knows who we need and he can bring them to Amen. us. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So what we've got to do is just remain humble before God, service of his. We yield to Him and allow Him to bring things yes. into our life that we need into our lives. That's right. We've got to yield to Him and let Him bring people to church that we need here yes. to build this church for Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. You know, I've talked to some about this, but you don't ever know. We might wind up buying a piece of property out here on the main road somewhere else. I've got my eye on already. Amen. Building a big church out there and selling this property and move out there on the main drag so the world can see us. Woo, boy. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. I don't know that it's going to happen, but I know one thing. That's been on my heart for some time now. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. I know, I know that this man called you. He owns this world. He owns the silver and the gold. He owns it all. Amen. Amen. So what we've got to do is say, Lord, here am I. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Thank you, Jesus. J James existed for the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. Yes. 2 Corinthians 10, beginning of verse 3. For though we walk, walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Amen. Casting down imagination and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So we've got to bring our thoughts into the obedience of Jesus Christ. Because he, let me tell you, Jesus knows the way he wants us to go. Right. Amen? Amen? He knows the very pathways for us to go. We might see, make a decision like Lot. We might look at the well water plain and say, well, I think this is the best way to go. But Abraham said, I'm going to go where God wants me to go. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. So what we've got to do, bring our thoughts and our imaginations into the will of God. And let Him be the leader. And when we do that, oh, thank, I guarantee you, I've never seen it fail. If we'll do that every time, it'll turn out better than what you could plan it to be. Amen. Or better than what I could plan it to be. Amen. That's, that's God. It's always amazed me how God can do he, he knows us better. We know ourselves. Amen. You got a request. You got a need. Yeah. And you ask God to heal it, to do this and do that. But God might say, no, I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to do it this way. I've seen the time. I don't know the times I've tried to figure out how God's going to meet this need. And I know this situation. And I would have it. This would be the best way right here. And God will meet the need. It's always different. It's always better. Amen. Amen. That's the way it is. Amen. Praise Amen. God forevermore. You see, we're walking. We're walking in the will of God when we do that. Amen. And when we're walking in the will of God, we're walking in the 
in the land of miracles. Hallelujah. We're walking in the time of miracles. We're walking in the time where the great things will happen that's beyond man's ability and power to do. Amen. 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 I'm going to say one more thing about this. God's able to touch somebody's heart and they just say, we're going to give you this piece of land here. <laughs> it's happened before. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Glory to God. James had the highest and most honored position in the world. What was that? Servant. Not the pastor of the Jerusalem church, but servant to Jesus. Amen. And every child of God if they're not, they should be, and they can be, and they ought to be a servant of Jesus Christ. That's, right. that's the most honored position in all the that's a, the honor of that is greater than being president. Right. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I know the world looks down on us and they don't they think we're a bunch of crazies and you know we 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 don't know where it is and all, but I'm telling you, when we are servants of Jesus, I mean real service of Jesus Christ, that's honor. That's greater than any honor that you will receive in anything else in all the world. That's right. To be a servant of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Moses. So many individuals that were servants of God. Deuteronomy 34 and 5. Moses was the servant of God. Amen. Now Moses, had he not been the servant, yielded to God, probably would have took the children of Israel in another direction. But he was directed by the Lord. And and you 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 you've read the story, how that God brought them through it, miracle after miracle after miracle Amen. being performed to get them through. Amen. Amen. Now if if it takes a, a divine intervention from God to get us through, God will do it. Amen. Because we just be servants of His. Yes. Joshua, a slave of God. Joshua twenty four nine. So these individuals were great individuals. David. 2 Samuel 3.18 was a servant of God. Jude, in Jude verse 1, a servant of God. And the, the list could go on and on and on. These men were servants of God. And that's what we want to do. We want to be servants of God. And whatever happens, no matter what the world says, no matter what the world thinks, and no matter what they do, we're servants of God. Amen. Amen. Let's take honor in that. Amen. Ephesians 6, 6 and 7. Not with our service as men please us, but as a service of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with good will doing service as to the Lord and not to man. Sister Diane, that job you're doing is, is clerk. You're doing that as unto the Lord. And we benefit from it because she helps us out in a record keeping and so on and so forth. And whatever position people have, if, if there's a nursery... We don't have children right now. I'm trusting God we're going to have some. And if you go about there changing baby diapers, you're not changing that baby diaper for that mother. You're changing that baby diaper for Jesus. Right. Amen. Amen. Whatever it is that we do, whether we teach, whether we witness, whether we cut the grass, whatever it is, we're doing it for Jesus. Amen. 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 Let's do it not as unto men, but as unto God. Amen. 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 We, I, want, I want to say, I commend you. There's so many things. I, I'm going to try to mention. I don't, I don't know them all, but I just... But anyway, there are churches of God that they don't cut the grass. They don't keep the yards. It looks like it's thrown away. It looks like nobody cares for it. That, that's a shame. Yes, Amen. That, that is a shame yes, for them, for people to allow... As pastors too. Amen. Amen. Now I'm glad we've got people here. Um, Brother LaRue and Sister Willine and I think they swap it back and forth. Is that right? Kind of. We, we work something out. We, they, we anyway, they keep it up. Uh, Brother LaRue cleaned the backyard up and hauled that drum off and all that kind of stuff. And uh, But I appreciate that. But what I'm saying is we do those things, whatever it is that we do. We do it as unto the Lord. That's what the Word of God says. Yes, right. And not, not as unto men, but as unto God. If we do it as thinking about, well, I'm just doing this for the pastor. I'm doing this for, for this mother. I'm doing this for that dad. We, we, would, we would lose interest, Amen. most probably. That's right. 
But we do it as unto the Lord. Amen. Sister Sarah leading the singing. Amen. Yes. It helps us, but you're doing it as unto the Lord. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Not not a, not unto man. Amen. Amen. Yes. Praise God forevermore. Thank you, Jesus. Colossians 3, 23 and 24. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Amen. How about that? Yes. And not unto men. Knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. Amen. We're serving Him. Thank you, Jesus. All of those things. It, 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 there's all sorts of jobs that has to be to keep a, a place moving on and looking good and and it, it's there's all sorts of jobs and we do those jobs as unto the Lord and not unto men. Amen. 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 Praise God for His love and His mercy. <clears throat> by the Lord He meant Elohim, uh, Yahweh. By Christ He meant the Messiah, the Savior that God had promised. And I'm not going to continue with that. There's more of this, but I'm just going to leave that. There. I found a couple of things to say about one that one verse of Scripture. There's something else I want, to, I want to say. James grew up in the same house with Jesus. They played together. He seen Jesus as he played with other children and how he uh, mingled with others. His attitude. He seen him in, in all sorts of situations that boys go through. Eat with him. They slept in the same house. And whenever Joseph, their dad, passed away, most probably Jesus stepped up to be the head of the family, the breadwinner, the leader of that house. And after growing up with him and seeing all the things that normally come in life, James says, He's God's son. Amen. This is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He was saying, I don't find any fault in him. Amen. This one that was known as my half-brother, if they used that terminology back then, this is the Messiah. Amen. Whenever you grow up with somebody, you know, you know more about them than the people that see them occasionally. Amen. Amen. And yet he was able to say, I'm his servant. Amen. I'm the servant of that one that grew up in the same home with me. Amen. What a testimony. What a statement. And so this should move us, and I hope it will move all of us, to rethink our position in God and to realize that we're, we're just servants. Just servants. Each one called to occupy a different position or to do a different job. I, I made the statement, I believe last Sunday, that if God had allowed me, I'd have made some preacher a good member. But that wasn't God's plan. Amen. If I'd have been looking for somebody to call into the ministry, and I knew me like I knew me, I wouldn't have called me. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But God, but God that look at what we are yes. when he calls us and finds us in our depraved condition. He sees us as to what he's going to make out of us if we'll let him. Amen. Amen. But you, you know, I, I, I'm going to close on this. And to me, it's a sad, sad, sad note. That some folk never, ever, ever become what God intended for them to become. Amen. Because they don't let God right. lead them. They're not willing to be a servant of Jesus Christ. But if we're willing to be servants of Jesus Christ, then he will make out. He's got a plan for every person's life. Yes. Understand, he's got a plan, a, a direct purpose for every individual. Yes. But it is up to us to yield to him and let him lead us and direct us. Oh, when I first got saved, there wasn't... People would to give you, I guess, two cents for my life in the Lord. But when Jesus saved me, Amen. He made such a radical change in this heart. The next morning I got up, walking across the yard, going out to the barn to go to work. 
Oh, man, I felt brand new. I mean, I felt it had more off overnight. Oh, it was there just as bright and yes. brilliant as it was. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, I believe it was more so than, that than when I got saved. Mm -hmm. Jesus was letting me know that he was real and that he had a job for me to Amen. do. Amen. Not just for me, but he's got a job for every... You know, if, if, if the Lord saves, if a sinner comes into this church house and gets saved, and God don't have anything for them to do. You know what I believe he'll do? Take them on to glory. Yes, hallelujah. I believe he'll carry them on to glory. Jesus. If he don't have anything for you to do, why stay here? Amen. Mm -hmm. That brings us right back to being a servant. So, as long as we're here, there's something for us to do. Amen. I, I, I am saddened by some of my minister friends as that have retired as to their attitude toward the ministry and so on and so forth. Um, I think they need to pray through about some of their feelings about the ministry. Amen. Because you don't retire from the calling of God. Amen. The calling of God is without repentance. That's right. you, might re you might retire from a position. But if you're called to preach there's no retirement from that. Right. As long as you're physically able and you have an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, if I hadn't got somebody to come preach regular, I might have been out there back of the house in the woods preaching to the trees. Amen. <laughs> God places this in your heart. Amen. And it's there. Right. I was born into this world to be a preacher. Didn't know what to start with. But God touched my heart and I knew there was going to be something I was going to be doing before ever God, God ever saved me. That there was something that God had for me to do. And uh, so when I got saved then the rest is history. And I thank God. I thank God for the calling. I didn't call myself. It was God. Amen. That's right. But you can't do it yourself. Amen. Whatever it is that you're doing for the Lord, you can't do it within yourself. You gotta do it by the grace of God. Amen. Let us right. stand. Hallelujah. In this you, closing prayer, let's let's just Thank pray and, and commit ourselves to the Lord as his servants one more time. Yes. That we might move forward into this new year. With a different attitude than we've had before. A renewed attitude. Lord, I'm your servant. God, I, I, I went in, let me tell you this. I went in by Lowe's the other night. Right here, right up the street. And we're in the vegetable department. And we got to talking with the lady there. And I said, I am the new pastor of the Belvedere Church of God. And she said, I took my children out there before. She couldn't think of what it was. I said to uh, youth camp? Yeah. And uh, I said, well, why don't you come and visit with us some? She said, well, I, I grew up a Catholic. I said, just, just come. Amen. And I went by there this evening to pick up something. And she she recognized me. I had my cap on. She recognized me. She said, how you doing? <laughs> doing good. And so that's a contact. Right. And when you drop a word or two like that, you know what you're doing? You're giving the Holy Ghost something Amen. to touch that heart, to remind them. She said, she said, one of the things she said, I I've been thinking I need to get back in church. Hallelujah. That's good. Here I am inviting her. Yes. I need to get back in church. There's people all about like that. Amen. All about. Yes. And so we got to say, Lord, I'm your servant. Amen. I want to be used by you. Yes. Not my will, but your will. Yes. I believe that that was a crossroad in that woman's life, in my life, that we were to meet yes. and for me to invite her to the house of God. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord Jesus. And hey, I'm not through inviting her yet. I'll see her again. Amen. She's assistant manager of the produce department. Doesn't know that much about her. And her first name is Karen. Okay. 
and she didn't tell me her last name, and I didn't inquire about that. Cause, but anyway, she said, had a, had a badge on. She said, my name's Kayla. Well, our piano player at Cross Hills' name was Kayla. Made it easy for me to remember. So if you get by there and you know, I think some of y'all met her or know her or whatever, invite her to church. Tell her that was your pastor that invited her out. Uh, we had a we had a team, and we may do that here. And I, I know I got you standing, but we had each team with four people on the team, and we would take four families or individuals, and one week this brother's on the team, this brother's on the team, this sister's on the team, that brother's on the team. So each one of those were assigned to a per different person this week. Next week. This, this one got another one, uh, one of those four. So at the end of the month, four-week month, all four of those families had been visited by each one of those team members one time. Amen. And we've done that. And uh, so and, and we, we need to think about doing something like that. And uh, so I went with Mrs. Christmas to her time to visit this lady. And so I went with her, and she said... Uh, I, I was talking, I said, we, we would really like for you to come be in church. But she said, I believe y'all would. All these people come by visiting me. Makes a difference. Yeah. You know what drew me back to the church of God? We went to church that night and I left there and I told this boy, and I'm going to tell it again. I want you to remember it. I, I was so excited in heart. I told my wife, I said, it seemed like they just wanted us to come to church. I was excited because that church people wanted us to go to church with them. And that's the attitude we got to show. Right. Amen. Right. Let's ask God to help us to be a better servant.